our line of products, it's a nutraceutical line. So it's stuff to take in place of your cold and flu medication or in place of your nootropic products or your energy boosters. It's, you know, an all natural line that you're meant to ingest. That being said, and I think a lot of listeners probably fall into this category, even in the natural product space, it's really hard to know what's clean. So taking things that are food grade, like what we're doing and, you know, mixing them into your skincare or using them as skincare, it's a way to really ensure that you're getting high quality, clean food grade stuff. Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 28 of The Healthy Skin Show. I've got a great guest for you today who's going to talk a whole lot about the use of honey and other bee products as part of your protocol. That said, I want to answer a listener's question first. Sherry asks, I have eczema and I noticed over the past couple of months that the rash or at least some sort of rash was spreading onto the back of my arms. So I went back to my doctor and asked if he could prescribe something. But it turns out that I actually have something called keratosis pilaris. I thought it looked like chicken skin. And when I look it up online, that's how it's described. Should I be worried about this or is it actually completely harmless? Sherry, this is a great question and I appreciate you for taking the time to send it in. Keratosis pilaris, which you're right, is oftentimes described as chicken skin on the back of the arms, is a condition that happens as a result of low or insufficient levels of vitamin A in the body. So while it might not itch, it may not really bother you except for the appearance and the feeling and texture of your skin. And so in that respect, it may be harmless. It's not from a nutritional sufficiency perspective because being low in vitamin A means that there are a bunch of other systems that then become challenged because they can't operate optimally. One of those systems, by the way, is your skin. So keratosis pilaris is a sign, is a physical symptom of vitamin A deficiency. Before you start supplementing with vitamin A, it's important to find out a baseline. Where is your vitamin A at now? And the easiest way to do that is to go back to your doctor and request that they check your serum vitamin A, which can be run at pretty much any laboratory like Quest or LabCorp. And that number will help give you a sense of where you start. In the particular case of vitamin A, it is possible to supplement too much. And I know that that's likely the route that people will take because the foods that oftentimes are high in vitamin A like liver, are foods that are unappetizing to most people like myself. And so you're likely going to pick a vitamin A supplement. However, the key here is not to just supplement ad nauseum. You do need to make sure that you don't over supplement vitamin A because you can end up with vitamin A toxicity. Now, here's the thing with vitamin A. It's not just good for your skin. Your eyes need vitamin A in order for you to see well or decently well at night. So if you notice that you're having what's described as night blindness issues, then that would also corroborate the fact that your vitamin A is too low. Additionally, and this is one thing that you're not going to be able to necessarily just feel a symptom for, is that your thyroid requires vitamin A in order to operate optimally. You can see just from these three systems, skin, eyes, and thyroid. The vitamin A is a very important nutrient. It's not one that you can just get enough of from eating carrots either because beta carotene, while it's a precursor to vitamin A, is not always well converted in the body to the active forms of vitamin A that the body actually needs, which is why it's important at times to supplement if you've found that your levels have gone too low. But again, you want to make sure that you're not over supplementing Be careful taking mega doses of vitamin A. I'm pretty conservative when it comes to the amount of vitamin A that someone should take if they demonstrate and we have lab testing that shows that they have a deficiency or are in an insufficient state where it's not necessarily deficient, but it's considerably low. 
I talk about a lot of labs that I utilize for my chronic skin rash clients over on the blog, and I'll link that lab article in this episode's show notes. Remember that most systems in the body are connected, that there are nutrients that are not necessarily used in just one spot, but instead across different systems of the body. And so this is one very clear sign when clients show up stating that they have this chicken skin or keratosis pilaris. The first thing I do is I test for serum vitamin A. And then of course, that typically comes back low. At least we know where we are. We begin to supplement that to get them back to a healthier spot. I personally prefer the liquid formulas of vitamin A because you can take them in food with other fats or you can take them under the tongue, making them very easy to also control the amount of vitamin A that you are consuming. Whereas in a pill form, you're at the mercy of whatever is in that pill. And just to give you a sense of how much I typically recommend of the professional grade liquid products that I use... I may only recommend one to two drops a day, not dropperfuls, drops. It's a very small amount to help fill those wells back up. And as the wells fill, you will notice that the skin on the back of your arms and anywhere else that that keratosis pilaris is showing up will start smoothing out as the skin pulls in what it needs in order to thrive. Great question though. Thank you so much for submitting that. And now I think it's time that we jump on over into our conversation all about those bee products and honey and how they can be utilized as part of your protocol. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Natural Skin Show. Today, I wanna talk all about bee products and how, yes, I said bee, guys, the thing that buzzes around that some people are afraid of because they might have an allergy and for other people, you're just like, I know we should save the bees, but I don't understand why we need the bees. And here we are, we've got a really, I don't know, she's an expert. She knows her stuff about bees. And the cool thing is she's a part of our community, and I will dive into that in a moment. My guest today is Carly Stein. She's the founder and CEO of Beekeepers Naturals, a natural health product company developing innovative bee-made nutraceuticals to provide effective natural solutions to modern health problems. Carly is committed to using her company as a platform to raising awareness and funding for the bee cause, because it's important, guys, we need to save the bees, as well as promoting sustainable practices and pesticide-free beekeeping. Now, before all of this, because Carly is did not just like wake up one day and say, oh, I live a life in bees, she actually worked as an analyst at Goldman Sachs in their securities division, and she spent time working at the William J. Clinton Foundation, which is, wow, pretty cool. Thank you for joining us, Carly. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to um, talk all about bee products and skin and everything. So it was interesting, like when I was reading your bio, I met somebody who worked for you and they're like, oh, you need to talk to Carly because she she's like totally right there with you in this world of like skin and everything. So can you just share with everybody what does skin rash issues mean to you? Oh, my gosh, so much. So I have an autoimmune condition my immune system is compromised. And then beyond that, I have psoriasis. So I've had psoriasis on and off my entire life. It is aggressively triggered by antibiotics and a lot of different chemicals um, and ingredients, a lot of the things that are found in over-the-counter medicine and cold and flu products. And so that's kind of how I got into the bee world and how my struggle began because I have a condition where my immune system is often compromised and I get sick very easily. And then I've got the psoriasis. So all of the stuff that one would normally take to combat immune issues are not accessible for me. And my struggles with psoriasis, it's been a really big journey. The longest outbreak I've had, I believe, was like six months. But I know that listeners can relate. I had full body head to toe. I've had a really rough time at different stages getting it into remission. And I found a lot of tools that have helped me along the way. A lot of them from the hive. (laughs) So tell us a little bit about that. Like people may be thinking, okay, so I use honey in my tea. It's not just honey. I think that's the important first step. So why don't you tell us that? Let's start there. So we've got honey and then what else, what else is there from bees? There's so many things that bees make. I love starting here because 
for myself as well, when I first was introduced to bee products, all I knew about was honey, but it turns out there's all of these different superfoods that the bees make that have, you know, some very different beneficial health effects. So honey, of course, everyone knows honey, it's a very healthy sweetener, but it's also really high in antioxidants. It's full of amino acids. It can actually help to get the body into a relaxed state. It's really good to take honey before bed. Topically, honey is a humectant, so it's great for moisturizing, nourishing, and then it's antibacterial as well. So I love doing facials and I actually wash my face with honey all the time. And there's a specific one I use and I'll tell you about that. But honey, how it works in the hive, it's the bee's food. You can think of honey as the bee's carbs. And then some of the other things that the bees make, my favorite and the thing that really changed my health is something called propolis. So you can think honey is the bee's carbs and energy source. Propolis is the bee's medicine. So propolis is made, bees collect plant and tree resins. So they're, you know, they're collecting from the base ingredient that's like a little bit more adaptogenic versus floral nectars. So they collect plant and tree resins, they put it through their enzymatic process, and they make this sticky substance called propolis. And then they use propolis to line the hive and keep it germ-free. So they line the entire hive with it. They line the inside of the cell walls for newborn baby bees to create a sterile environment. And for humans, it functions as a protector as well. It's antiviral, antifungal, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, and antibacterial. So it's an amazing alternative to antibiotics and our typical over-the-counter medicines, particularly for people who have reactive conditions and autoimmune concerns. So I like to think propolis is like the safe go-to to boost your immune system. And then for me as well, taking it, and I put it on my skin, but taking it orally, it's really helped to stabilize my immune system. Bee products, royal jelly and propolis actually are immunomodulatory agents, which means they help to stabilize. And a lot of these skin conditions are triggered by just our immune system kind of going out of control. So that's what's happening. That's what we're we're seeing our skin cells are like overproducing in the case of psoriasis. So for propolis, for me, originally I was just using it as an immune booster. It was the first time I found an immune booster and a cold and flu remedy that didn't cause a crazy head to toe reaction. So that was like a game changer for me because I actually experienced recovery from things like my chronic, I had chronic tonsillitis and strep throat. And then I started taking it daily and just incorporating it into my routine. And I noticed a real reduction in inflammation and my, my immune system and my psoriasis started to kind of dissipate and stabilize. And then I started incorporating it in an even bigger way. And, you know, it's now just a part of my daily routine and a part of my life and how I kind of keep everything under control. So that's propolis. And then royal jelly, you can think of as the superfood of the hive. So royal jelly is the exclusive food of the queen bee. The nurse bees make it And all baby bees are fed royal jelly for the first three days of development. And then after the three days, they're transitioned off of it on and they go to a diet of honey and pollen. But the queen continues with just the royal jelly. And in nature, royal jelly has some pretty insane effects. So the queen bee will live three to five years versus a regular bee who lives, you know, six to eight weeks during foraging season. The queen bee is laying, you know, up to 1500 babies a day, whereas regular bees don't have reproductive organs, um, female bees that is. And the queen bee just is significantly more robust and physically different. So royal jelly is pretty amazing. Internally, people use it a lot as a brain booster and a brain detoxification agent. So it's really high in acetylcholine, which helps to combat brain fog. It helps to improve our memory. Royal jelly is like a totally natural, holistic sort of plant-based supplement. So it's something that's very safe to take. And we see people using it for everything from, you know, just improved brain health to reducing their likelihood of neurodegenerative conditions to concussion recovery. And it's got these uh, fatty acids in it called 10-HDA and AMP N1 oxide. And they basically act as catalysts for neurogenesis. So they actually help our brain to create new clean neurons and brain cells. So royal jelly is a pretty amazing superfood for the brain. And then for skin, it it's been used across cultures, like going, you know, if you look at traditional Chinese medicine and yeah, just for a very, very long time, different parts of the world, humans have been using royal jelly as an anti-aging tool. And so it's really great because, you know, it's full of fatty acids. It's also antibacterial. I mentioned as well, it's also an immunomodulatory agent. So great for stabilizing, full of antioxidants. And so it's really great for the skin and royal jelly also really amazing for inflammation. I've used a combination of royal jelly, honey, propolis, and pollen 
to really kind of boost my skin tone. My mom has used this to get rid of rosacea. Yeah, you were saying, so your mom had, had, I guess, rosacea. And she's used a combination, you were saying before we started talking, she's actually used bee products to help her. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so my mom developed rosacea when she was pregnant with me. Sorry, mom. And she spent a lot of her life on and off cycles of antibiotics. And she's, you know, she tried everything to combat it and nothing really worked. And we make this product called Be Powered. It's a superfood honey. So it's a raw honey with medicinal grade dosages of all the superfoods from the hive from, so it includes pollen, it includes propolis, it includes royal jelly, and it's in a raw honey base. And my mom does facials with it. And I do facials with it once a week as well. And it's really great because propolis will combat any sort of impurities and fight inflammation. Honey helps with moisture, exfoliation and antioxidants. Pollen is really high in vitamins. Um, It also contains a compound called rutin, which strengthens capillaries. And then royal jelly is like the ultimate anti-aging agent full of fatty acids. It's really nourishing and healing. And so this combination it's a really great way to sort of soothe and support the skin. And then just back to propolis, there's also been a lot of really interesting research looking at propolis for its anti-inflammatory effects on the skin. So if I ever burn myself, I burn myself all the time. I'm the very clumsy chef, but I always spray propolis. And it's also, I almost use propolis. I mentioned it as like a natural alternative to antibiotics. While topically, it's also really great as a protective agent. So I use it the way a lot of people would use Neosporin because Neosporin is another thing that I can't use. I'll react to that. So if I ever get a cut, when I burn myself, even like if I burn my tongue on coffee or if I get canker sores, any sort of inflammatory thing, I spray propolis and I like to surf. And I unfortunately have burned my face more times than I would like to. And what I do to that is I actually spray propolis into whatever skin cream I'm using. And so it's really great for just healing and yeah, reducing inflammation. Wow. That's really interesting. So I'm wondering myself being bee conscious, I garden and all this stuff and other listeners may also be bee conscious. They might be thinking, well, this is great, but aren't you like taking the bees hard work how are you doing this? And, you know, I think I was just curious because this is so great that we have all these alternatives and options that, you know, dermatologists may not have told you about, but how do you not hurt the hive? First of all, bees make a real surplus of product. So if you're, if you're working with bees in a sustainable manner and you're exposing them to, you know, healthy, clean plant sources, they're going to have more than they need. So that's a really big part of it. But What we do at Beekeepers Naturals, we practice sustainable beekeeping. And what that means to us is at every level of production, we're working to save the bees. We're constantly monitoring our hives. We're looking at how much they produce. If we ever see a hive that's kind of, you know, looking a little weaker, we just won't source from them. Our business model as well, we work with a network of small scale beekeepers all over the world who meet our standards of sustainability. And we do that because if any one hive is looking depleted, we'll just let them chill. And then beyond that as well, we're doing that because I'm autoimmune and because people in the autoimmune community and, you know, people dealing with skin things, when you're taking health foods, you don't want to be exposed to pesticides. And a sad reality of the bee product world is it's coming from plants and often they're exposed to pesticides. And, you know, even if you're buying organic honey, bees aren't like cattle where you can fence in or blueberries that stay in one place, they fly. So just because the the ground that the bees are on is certified organic, if the neighbors are doing something dirty, the bees will fly over and get exposure. And the bees can forage for a five mile radius. And, you know, finding a five mile radius of clean ground in the U.S. is a tall order these days, unfortunately. So what we do is, you know, we work in different parts of the world and we find that that radius and we find um, bees that are exposed to only clean plants. And we do third party pesticide testing on all of our raw product to make sure that there's no pesticides, pollutants, toxins. And again, we do that one, because I literally cannot take that stuff without reacting. And two, because if you're buying superfoods and you're buying, you know, these natural products to heal your skin and heal your health, there's, you should not be exposed to anything toxic. You're trying to detox, not retox. And that's, you know, one of our core values is transparency and, and building products that are effective. And then the third reason is that by doing that, we can really be a part of the solution for the bees. So one of the big issues affecting the bees today, and one of the reasons we're losing bees at a rapid pace is 
because of pesticide exposure. So if we can get the bees away from those pesticides and give them access to clean flowering plants and actually ensure that, you know, they're being cared for in a nourishing way, then we can have real impact in the solution. And what we've seen is our year over year hive population has grown contrary to population trends. So that's kind of how we're doing it. We're seeing that our the bees that we're keeping are doing better and better. They're growing, they're splitting and swarming, which is for any beekeeper listening, you'll know what I mean, but beekeeper way of saying that they're multiplying at a really rapid rate. And yeah, that's a really great thing. And then the other thing is that the beekeeping world has really changed in the olden days. There used to be tons of beekeepers who, you know, took care of the bees the same way we take care of other animals and then sold the raw product to people like, like my company to make things out of or to, you know, sell at farmer's markets. But today our consumption has gone up and our pollinator and bee population has gone down. So you make more money typically as a beekeeper working in commercial pollination. And what that is, it's when, you know, you put your bees on a truck and you drive them over to whatever crop type needs pollinating. Like in in California in February during the almond bloom, people will bring their bees from all over the U.S. to let loose and pollinate almonds. And the issue with that, and certainly it can be done in a kind way, but, you know, how things go in this world, we're, we're not always the most careful And what will happen is, you know, you're bringing the bees on a big journey in the back of a truck, which is stressful. And then you're letting them loose to pollinate these orchards. And sometimes pesticides are being sprayed around them. um, And it's quite toxic. So because that's really kind of become the primary practice when it comes to bees, what we do is we find sustainable beekeepers who who really care about the environment and, you know, care about the bees and many of which love them like pets, which sounds crazy, but I fall into that category. We say to people like that, like, hey, hold up. I know you can, you know, make a living doing this, but you can actually keep your bees on clean ground and stay put and, you know, care for them. We'll work with you and we'll commit to buying up all your product. And that's, that's really kind of how it started. So my answer to that question is as long as you're keeping bees in a safe way, you're getting them away from pesticides and you're, you're really monitoring hives to make sure that they're strong and that they're getting what they need, then you can actually contribute in a positive way to the bee population. And that's really what we do. And that's what we stand for. And we're a benefit corporation. Um, We also partner with UC Davis Bee Research. So we're really active in finding a solution, especially with the pesticides. And yeah, it's, it's, that's what it's all about. I sometimes tell people that, you know, eating our bee products is better for bees than eating a blueberry. Like more bees are dying and commercial pollination of things like almonds. I actually don't use almonds anymore. I try not to because it's really something that's hurting the bees. But but yeah, that's that's kind of what it's all about. With that said, you had mentioned, which I think people are probably curious about, about applying stuff like this to your skin. Because they're probably like, okay, wait, it's sticky. You're saying you put it on your face. <laughs> what are the steps if you wanted to say apply this to your face or if you have a rash someplace. And obviously I'm just going to say everybody, like if you're applying anything to your skin, I would advise you, and I'm not a doctor, but if your skin is broken, you may want to check with a doctor first to make sure that what you're applying is safe because you can't just go throwing different things on your skin if it's broken open and you've got wounds or, or areas that won't heal. But if you don't have that and you've just got rashes Say you want to try and do that like mask or a, a topical application. How would you do that, Carly? With Which product is that that you, you said you guys so, make? Well, let's say I use a psoriasis outbreak and then be powered. It's the medicinal honey. A lot of people use this face mask. So first of all, great question. Our line of products, it's a nutraceutical line. So it's stuff to take in place of your cold and flu medication or in place of your nootropic products or your energy boosters. It's, you know, an all natural line that you're meant to ingest. That being said, and I think a lot of listeners probably fall into this category, even in the natural product space, it's really hard to know what's clean. So taking things that are food grade, like what we're doing and, you know, mixing them into your skincare or using them as skincare, it's a way to really ensure that you're getting high quality, clean food grade stuff because you know these are things that are built they're built to be ingested so there's like it's held to a higher standard of purity than just pure cosmetic so with the propolis like I said like I I spray it in my mouth every single day I spray it more if I'm feeling run down or stressed because stress is a catalyst for an outbreak 
And then if I do have an outbreak or I have kind of the start of an outbreak, what I'll do is I'll spray our propolis spray into a carrier oil. And then I use that all over my body. And then I spray it into my face cream as well. And I put that on my face and that's just, you know, like a fixed part of my routine. It's a little bit sticky, but when you mix it with the carrier oil, it's actually pretty nice. And yeah, propolis, it's, it's just so great. Cause I feel like it's such a multi-purpose product. It's addressing so many conditions. It's good for acne, also good for inflammation, really high in the antioxidants, caffeic acid. So all of that stuff. And then for the B powered face mask, that is definitely sticky. Do not wear a cute top when you're doing a B powered honey face mask. That is a warning. So what I do is I usually, I'll take, you know, a tablespoon of the honey. I'll throw on a pajama top that I don't care about or do it when I'm in the bath and I'll put it all over my face for 10, 15 minutes. It drips a lot. You can, the benefit is you can like lick your lips and it's pretty delicious, but I'll put a towel down where I'm lying or, you know, like I said, do it in the bath. And so leave it on for 10, 15 minutes and then just kind of rub it off in circular motions. And it's a really nice exfoliant as well. And that really gets my skin glowing. Like that's, that's been, I noticed a big difference in just my general complexion. So I use, so the bee powered honey, it's multi-purpose. It's for like all skin types because it has all of those different superfoods that treat different issues. And then it's just completely natural. Like there's no additives. It's something that's been built for you to eat. So super pure. And then the propolis, it's more for, antibacterial effects and inflammation. So the propolis is more like a specific affliction, whether it's curing a burn, dealing with eczema or psoriasis outbreak, or even acne. Okay. And and with the face mask, then once you do the circular motions, then you're, I assume, going to wipe it off with like a yep. wash. Warm water. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Warm water, just wash it off. And and yeah, because the, pro- the propolis has the antibacterial effects, same with the honey, it's it's really great for cleansing the skin too. That's great. Wow, that is so neat. I love that it's, you know, you're right. There, There is this very interesting trend toward more, oh, I can eat my skincare. It's very clean. And, and it is true. I mean, n- none of us want to apply pesticides directly to our skin or to consume them. We think that it is safe. And you're right. We are, to some degree, we are potentially misled by the idea that because it's marked as organic, that automatically means that it is clean. So I love that you're going that extra step and not just the extra step with the pesticides, but you're also taking care and tending to the hives in a very responsible manner. And as you said, being a part of the solution instead of moving in this direction where we're just taking all of it for our own benefit and forgetting about the bees, which we really need. So I just want to thank you so much. This has been great. And I know that you you have been so kind. You guys are sharing a really great discount code with everybody. So for everyone who is interested, so first, tell us your website. The website, it's beekeepersnaturals.com. You can find all of our products there. And we have a really cool Instagram page as well, if anyone's interested in learning more. And it's just at beekeepers underscore naturals. Cool. Yes. And I'll put the links to all of that. And then if you guys are interested in making a purchase and checking out their products and trying them at home, you can get 15% off by using the discount code natural skin show 15. And if you're driving or away from the computer, you can come back to the show notes and we will have all of that information here along with all of Carly's information. So you can stay connected to her as well. Carly, thank you so much for joining us and sharing not just like your psoriasis journey and kind of your mom's rosacea journey too, but also all of the great things that have helped you and what you guys are doing. This is what I love is we're offering people these alternative ways to address their skin from a more holistic standpoint. And I love that we can include your products as a part of that solution. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I know that we kind of jumped around today, but I hope that all of this information is really valuable and helpful. Of course, all of the notes, links, other articles, and resources are linked in the show notes. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the show, share it with a friend or two or three, and I'll see you in the next episode.